Let's pray.
In the name of Jesus, we give you the praise, Lord, and we thank you. Good evening and welcome. My name is Victor Anyate Patterson, coming to you from Perez Chapel International, Almira. We want to thank God and bless him for another wonderful week that we have enjoyed. Times of refreshing, times of working, times of enjoying with our families. The Lord has been good to us and we are so grateful to him. We are grateful for life, grateful for the good things that he has done for us. So we say, may the good God who has started a good work in us, may he perfect it and may he bring us to that place that we would always recognize that if the Lord has not been for, with us, where would we have been? And because the Lord is with us and he is for us, we would not be losers. We are not losers. We are winners. We are marching forward. Greater are the things ahead of us than the things that are behind us. So we worship the Lord and we bless him. We will be studying the word of God from the book of Acts. But I would like to encourage us, as the Lord has done so much for us, join me, let us thank him. Join me, let us bless his name. Join me, let us appreciate him for that which he has done. Because it is just the Lord who protected us. It is, just, it is the Lord who kept us. He gave us life. He sustained us. And because of his sustenance, we are alive and well, and we can praise him. Our voices are activated. Our praises are for the Lord. Amen. Because it is he who has done all those great things. We praise God for that which he has done and will do and is now doing. And we worship him for who he is, his integrity. His, his, his moral integrity and where he sits that no man can compare to him. So wherever you are, I think, I believe, you would have a reason to thank the Lord. There must be a reason for you to thank the Lord. And if there is such a reason, then open your mouth and thank him wherever you are. Father in heaven, how we love you. We love you because you first loved us. You showed us an example, the greatest example of love. And because you love us, we can also love you. Because you love us, we can also open our mouths and even love others. It is by the love that we have experienced that we are able to love others. Thank so we thank you and we bless you. We bless you for your goodness and for your mercies. We bless you for the wonderful things that you have done for us. Great and mighty are you. And that which you do is marvelous in our sight. So we give you praise this evening. We bless you this evening. We honor you this evening in the mighty name of Jesus. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Thank you for provision. Thank you for protection. Thank you for divine health. We give you all the praise that is due to your name. Thank you, Lord God Almighty. Thank you. Your mercies are new every morning. Great is your faithfulness. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. So we give you all the praise. We give you all the glory. Yes, open your mouth wherever you are. Open your mouth wherever you are. Open your mouth wherever you are and bless him. Open your mouth wherever you are and thank him. Open your mouth wherever you are and appreciate him. For it is he who has kept us. It is he who has provided for us. He, we, 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 we originated from God. God is the one who has bestowed his love and his peace upon us. So open your mouth. The peace we enjoy comes from God. The peace we enjoy comes from him. Yes, open your mouth. Yes, ma. Labrando so katayadaba. Open your mouth and love him. Open your mouth and bless him. Open your mouth and give him praise. Open your mouth and honor him. Open your mouth and glorify him. He is good and his mercy is endured forever. Thank the Lord for that which he is doing. Thank the Lord for that which he has done. Thank the Lord for that which he has, is using you to do. Thank the Lord that he is on your side. He is not your enemy. He is actually 
your father, the one who wants to relate to you. So open your mouth wherever you are. Just thank him. Just bless him. Give him praise. Give him honor. Adore him in the name of Jesus. Blessings and honor, glory and power belongs to our God. Open your mouth wherever you are. Open your mouth and thank him. Open your mouth and honor him. Open your mouth and glorify him. He is worthy of all praise, worthy of all honor. Yes, wherever you find yourself, thank the Lord. Bless the Lord. Bless the Lord. Give him praise for he deserves it. Give him praise for he is your father. Give him praise for he is your provider. Give him praise. He is. He deserves the honor. Yes, open your mouth. It's it's this wonderful week that we find ourselves in, and the Lord is doing greater things in our lives. And if the Lord has been good to you, wherever you are, open your mouth. Show appreciation. Open your mouth. Bless the Lord. Open your mouth. Glorify His name. He is worthy of all praise. Worthy of all honor. Yes, Father, we give you praise. Father, we give you honor. We glorify your name. Who is like you, Lord? Who is like you, Lord? We cannot compare any to you. For we know that in you will live and move and have our being. Yes, Lord, for all that you have done, for all that you are about to do, we give you praise and we give you glory. For you provide for us, you meet us at the point of our needs. And Lord, above all, you are our God and our Savior. We love you. We bless you. We give you all the praise in the name of Jesus. Yes, Lord. In the name of Jesus, we bless you. We give you praise. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. In the mighty name of Jesus. Yes, we give you praise. 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 Yes, we bless you. We honor you in the name of Jesus. Share the link with somebody. Share it with somebody. Share it with somebody that they would be blessed this evening also. Share it with someone you know. Share it with someone who is who desires to worship God, who desires the word of God, who desires to study the word in the name of Jesus. Share it with somebody that the person would also be blessed in the name of Jesus. Yes, in the name of Jesus. That is a means of a blessing that you would be to that person in the name of Jesus. Anyone that comes upon your mind, upon your heart, share the link with them in the name of Jesus. Yes, bless the Lord. Bless the Lord. Give him praise. Give him honor in the name of Jesus. We give you praise and honor because Lord, you have been good to us. We thank you. We thank you. We thank you. We glorify you, Lord, for all that you are doing in our lives. We thank you for all that you do in our lives. We bless you for all that you have been doing, Lord. We thank you for all that you are doing now. We bless you for all that you would do tomorrow. We thank you. So we honor you for the good things. Uh, so we honor you for the mighty things. Uh, we honor you for the blessings. Uh, we honor you, Lord, for your love for us. Uh, in the mighty name of Jesus, we give you praise and we give you glory. I don't know, but because of the theme of this month, uh, I would like to encourage us uh, to share the link to people. Bl be a blessing by sharing this link to somebody. Go to the YouTube, Victor Anyate Patterson, copy the link, share it with somebody. There are people who are not on Facebook, so they cannot connect through Facebook. There are some people who are on YouTube, so get the link from the YouTube, get it from the Facebook, and share it with your friends, that they would be blessed in the name of Jesus. Share it in the name of Jesus. This month is a special month, it is a month of evangelism and follow-up. So if you have spoken the word of God to somebody, it is time to follow the person up. If you have not shared the word with somebody, it is time for you to share the word with somebody. So copy the link and share it to as many people that you can send it to. Because this is the means of evangelism. Mm. Let's go to Matthew chapter number 28. In the name of Jesus. We will do the verses from the verses number 18 downwards. Matthew, it's not a coincidence, but, you know, we've been dealing with Matthew so far, the whole of uh, February. And uh, 
we we I think yesterday was the, today was the last chapter, the, the chapter twenty eight. So let's pick this and let's look at what. <laughs> I I just want you to understand some few things. Jesus said, "I will build my church, and the gates of hell shall not prevail against it." The church is the called out. Ecclesia is the called out. We, every human being is a creature of God. When you become born again, you become a child of God. And the purpose of you being born again is a selection. So when you are called out of the many, the world, into the kingdom of God, you become Ecclesia. You become the church. And the church has been given a purpose. The church has been given a job to do, a task to finish. Just as in the book of Genesis, chapter number 1, verse number 26, God gave the authority of managing the earth to man, that is Adam then, is the same way he has given in this era that we live in this dispensation the authority to the church in the garden of eden adam stood as the church to administer management in the earth and today the church ecclesia stands as the steward to take care of things for the lord and jesus before he would leave the earth before he would physically no longer be seen, gave an instruction to the church. And that instruction is what I want us to deal with. So that you would understand that if we are dealing with a month of evangelism and follow up, you cannot be dormant. You cannot sit back and, and say, I, I just want to be blessed. Yes, thank God he has called you into his kingdom. And when you enter into his kingdom, you would be blessed. You would have so much, more than enough, so that you would be a blessing unto others. Matthew 28, from the verse number 18, is almost a mirror of Genesis 1.26. It is a time that the owner delegates authority to the steward. Amen. Delegates authority to the steward. Gives the steward that authority, <laughs> as they say, that power of attorney to represent the owner. Amen. To represent the owner. The verse number 18 reads like this of the chapter 28 of the book of Matthew. He says, and Jesus came and spoke to them. Who were those them? That is his disciples. Amen. The ones he had taught, the ones who had been following him, he said to them, <laughs> all authority has been given to me in heaven and on earth. Amen. Amen. Flip, Amen. If you, if you, <laughs> please uh, help me bring back Genesis 1.26. Genesis 1.26. Then God said, let us make man in our own image. According to our likeness, let them have dominion over the fish of the sea, over the birds of the air, and over the cattle, over all the earth, and every, over every creeping thing that creeps on the earth. So, here God gave the authority to man to rule and have dominion over everything on earth. Amen. Amen. That authority was lost because whom you obey, you become a servant too. Man obeyed the evil one, the, 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 the deceiver, the, the supplanter, the one who would deceive us. And instead of him telling us that we should eat the fruits of life, he told us to seek for the knowledge of good and evil. The very fruit that God had said, do not touch. God has laid a demarcation. God has said, don't touch this thing. 
but he came to convince man to touch it. We lost it. But Jesus came to restore that authority. So let's go to Matthew 28, verse number 18. So he's going to the cross, the death, the burial, and the resurrection, living a sinless life. Matthew chapter number 4, verse number 4. Go there first. Matthew 4, verse number 4. Yes, in the name of Jesus. Father, we thank you. We bless you. We give you praise. But he answered and said, it is written, man shall not live by bread alone, but by every word that proceeds from the mouth of God. Here, the same technique, the same trick, the same deceit that the evil one. In this contest, I will not say the devil. I would rather use the word Satan. Amen. Which Amen. Satan used to deceive man is the same thing he was trying to use on Jesus Christ. He was trying to use on Jesus. So he was trying to convince Jesus and to deceive Jesus into giving G him, Satan, that authority that Jesus had now gained. So if Jesus had obeyed him and turned the stones into bread, whom you obey, you serve then Jesus would have lost his authority. That is why, <laughs> if you look at this contest, I think that if we go, go forward, let me see where he, he said, get thee behind me, Satan. He did not say, get thee behind me, devil. <coughs> why? Because Satan is not the name of the devil. The devil himself. His name is Lucifer. Satan means, the word Satan means someone who is hindering you from getting to your purpose. Anything that hinders you from getting to your purpose is Satan. Anything. So if you are fasting and food is trying to hinder you from continuing your fast, that is Satan, not devil. That is why sometimes we do some prayers, we pray some prayers and nothing happens and we are thinking that God did not hear us, but it is the words we are using. If you say, I bind you devil, meanwhile it, was, it is a satanic thing that was happening, you are using the wrong vocabulary. Yeah, most of the time we, we choose to say devil, we hear he said, get thee behind me because Satan was trying to hinder Jesus Christ from fulfilling his purpose. Why? Because if he had submitted or obeyed him, he would have handed over his authority to him. Check for me why Jesus also told Peter, get thee behind me, Satan. The same concept. Because he was, Peter was trying to pro, prevent Jesus from fulfilling his purpose. So why would the same word, Satan, be used for the devil and then again be used for Peter, who was a disciple and a follower of Jesus Christ? Why would that happen? Because Jesus was going to fulfill his purpose and the devil was trying to hinder him and at that time he was operating on the level of satan not as the devil because the word satan means anything that hinders you from moving forward anything that hinders you from fulfilling your purpose if you fast forward if you you just search for it We'll come to, we'll, I, I just want it to be a reference for us to see so that you realize that uh, 1623, 1623, that is where, Matthew 1623, that is where, thank you very much, Matthew 1623, that is where Jesus told Peter, referred to Peter as Satan. Amen? Referred to him as Satan. So, when you bring it into the context of 28, amen, he said, he, but he turned and said to Peter, 
get behind me, Satan. So you see here, when he was dealing with Peter, he said, Satan. He was dealing with the devil himself during the temptation of Jesus when he was fasting and he called him again, Satan. He referred to him as Satan. It's a verb. It is a verb. That means that someone or anything that is forcing its way to prevent you from fulfilling purpose. Anything that is preventing you from fulfilling purpose. Amen. 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 So what we see here is that Jesus overcame all of these. This is not what we are dealing today, but I am just led to explain this thing so that we understand some of these things. So we know that when it comes to the things of God and the purpose of God, there is someone that is hindering us. There is someone that is hindering us. And that someone is not just the devil, because that is what we do. I bind you, devil. I but it is a Satan. And the Satan is a title. It is not a name. It is a title. So if you say an army officer, a sergeant, when you go into the military, you find a sergeant. When you go into the police, you find a sergeant. In the settings of that type, you find a sergeant there. It is a title. It is not a name. So if you scream a title, you would, not, you would have many people responding to it based on their level that they stand. For instance, if you say in the Bible, if we keep saying a centurion, what does it mean? Amen. 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 What does it mean? So you cannot just say, Satan, get thee behind me. Which of the Satans are you dealing with? If the Satan is you yourself, you are not a giver. So your finances is going up and down. Anyhow, anyhow. You don't give tithes. Your finances is funny. And you are binding the devil. Ah, sorry. Nothing would happen. Because he has done nothing. It is you who is not giving. That is why you are fighting against that principle of seed time and harvest. And when you fight against the principles of God, this very principle is inbuilt to give you its reward. And when you, you go against that principle, the reward is negative. When you work with it, the reward is positive. Amen. When you work with it, the reward is positive. Sometimes we read the scriptures as, as people of God, but we don't take our time to digest it. We don't take our time to see the most important things that are in there. He says, <laughs> look at what Jesus told Peter. The very person that he was grooming to take over from him. He said, get behind me, Satan. You are an offense to me. You are an offense. New King James Version, if I'm not mistaken. For you are not mindful of the things of God, but the things of men. So Peter was looking at the benefits that he can enjoy. Jesus, you are around. What, are you, what do you mean? When, we, when you start preaching, look at the crowds that come. So the fact that the crowds come, and that is what I see with a lot of us. A man of God is powerful, anointed, and we are following him. And the crowd show up. And we, we are standing at the gate allowing in or disallowing. So we think we are the champions. We, we don't seek God for ourselves. A lot of the people who follow great men of God are not spiritual. They are not. Because they, they, they have become they, they think it's, it's simple, it's familiar. Because they see the weaknesses and the vulnerability of the man of God, they think it is easy. But God chooses the foolish things of this earth to confound the wise. So when you get into Matthew chapter number 28, from the verse number 18, Jesus is trying to paint a picture to tell them that, though I went through all of these satanic hindrances, I overcame, and because I overcame, 
all authority has been given to me in heaven and on earth. Then the 19 from there, now he is commanding them, all followers, you included, me included, all followers, all believers, anyone who says that I am born again, anyone who says that I am saved, anyone who says that I believe in Jesus, this is what you were saved to do. You were not saved to preach for money. You were not saved to, to teach for money. You were not saved to say, oh, as for me, I'm anointed. No. If you are anointed, go and do what the Lord said you should do. Because actually, your anointing is for bringing in the souls. Your anointing, all of the anointing you have, that makes you think that you have to use it to raise money to twist people's hands, is to bring in the souls. We have to reach out to them. There is so much that is going on. When people die, we, we, we make it look as if we, we know where they are going, but we do not know. Even you and I, do, are you sure today if you are to die, you know where you are going? Are you sure? Now, when you should, you should fall down and die right now. Do you know where you are going? Or you think you are going to heaven? <laughs> Scripture says that people performed miracles. People prophesied in the name of Jesus. Yet, when they showed up, he said, I did not know you. You workers of iniquity. So, <laughs> performing miracle is not a standard for entering the kingdom. Oh, yes. He said, many will say, Lord, Lord. And he will tell them, I did not know you. And they started mentioning the things they did. And he said, I, do, I don't even know you. Can you imagine? You, 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 you are healing. You are, you, you are being a blessing. You are calling people's names. They are grandparents which they themselves did not see. You can see their names and mention it. Yet, the Lord, the master, the owner of this earth and of eternity is telling you that I did not know you. Because when you were mentioning the names, one, you were glorifying yourself. Two, you were not doing it to get people into the kingdom. How many of us minister? How many of us preach? And at the end of the preaching, make even an altar call to get one soul into the kingdom. The priority is at the end of every preaching or whatever, we stir the people up so that we can take money from them. So that we can take money from them. Anything that is done, anything that is done, it could be a good thing, but if it is not done in the right way, it's sin. Even eating. Food is good. Food is nice. Food is sweet. But if you overeat, it's sin. Too much of everything is bad. The verse number 19, look at how Jesus commanded us. Oh, sorry, forgive me for taking much time on, on this because it has become a passion. Because we, we just entered into this month. This is the third day of the month, March. Amen. It is Amen. the third day of the month, March. And I can see that in the spirit. The way the Holy Spirit wants to move in this month, we would have to prepare ourselves. You see that he says that all authority has been given to him in heaven and on earth. Then now, this, if, if you have the red letter Bible, you would see that this was printed in red. So it came directly from his mouth. It isn't like someone heard and said, and Jesus said, no. Quoted from him. So you will see that it is, it, it is in brackets. He says, go therefore and make disciples. Oh, Jesus, have mercy on us. Go therefore and make disciples of 
all nations. One, make disciples of all nations. Make disciples of all nations. Then he goes on to say, baptizing them in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. Goes on to say that, and lo, I am with you always. The verse number 20. Check the verse number 20 for me. He says, teaching them. <laughs> they're receiving the teaching them. Teaching them to observe all things that I have commanded you. And lo, I am with you always. Even to the end of the age. Amen. Amen. So our tax is not to prophesy to people. Jesus did not prophesy to anyone. Actually, what we call prophecy is preaching. Yes. If, if, if you're a good Bible student, go and research what prophecy means. It is declaring the word of God. Speaking the word of God. So it is not calling names of dead people. Those are signs for the unbeliever. And the purpose of those things is to get them into the kingdom. If you keep coming to believers who say they are born again, and keep mentioning names and calling those things. To, 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 what do you want to prove to a believer again? The person is in the kingdom. Rather, you teach them sound doctrine so that they can stick and grow. So they become disciples, also going out to make disciples of, the, of all nations. He's, he did not say a few disciples. Amen. Make a few disciples. No. The Bible says of all nations. So we have to make sure that every single person that enters into the kingdom of God becomes a disciple. Amen. Amen. Becomes a disciple. It is not yeah. easy not to, to make disciples. Yes. It is easy to keep church members and preach to them. God will bless you. God is about to increase you. God will, God will open the door. Tomorrow by this time, greater things will happen. The person is not working. You are telling him tomorrow by this time, greater, you would have money. Where is the money coming from? He said we should make disciples. To make a disciple. I, I did a course on discipleship. It took, it took pastors over two years to finish one course. Discipleship, pastors. And you, you became born again six months. You are already a prophet. And the people that are following you, head what? Nothing in the head. They don't understand the scriptures. And they are walking around making noise. And you say you have made disciples. So you, you think you qualify as a man of God to stand in the kingdom. And even before the Lord. I am sorry. You did not fulfill what the Lord commanded us to do. When someone is about to die, their last words are taken serious. This time, he had already died, Jesus, had been buried, and had res resurrected. He was about to leave the earth so that nobody would see him physically again until we all come to him where he is going and these are his words from the verse number 19 if you are a believer you would and and you want to know what god has for you as a believer this is what you should memorize this is what you should memorize if he says that i have i have plans for you of good and not of evil to bring you to an expected end if you quote that scripture, you should come and quote this one in addition to add to it. God, this seals it. Amen. The plans of God for us to increase us, to bless us, to make us greater, and whatever God has for us continues and it is affirmed when we obey Matthew 28 from the verse number 19 to 20. Amen. Amen. So until we come to the place, and I came to encourage us, we are worshiping the Lord, and He's he, that is the, the, the what came on my on my heart. That 
we can prophesy, we can pray, we can, we can command, we can, we can uproot and plant. But if we are not bringing people into the kingdom, if we are not bringing people into the kingdom, I always joke with this thing that the very person you call an enemy today could be your brother. So if he is an enemy today and he is giving you headache, get him into the kingdom. He becomes a brother. That is the wisdom of God. That is the wisdom of Christ. If we are many, it is easy for us to carry the, the burden. But if we are few, even the ones who are committed will become weary. Even the ones who are committed, they will become weary. Because it is not easy to carry it, the load alone. You can be committed, but if you are alone, ah, Lord, you, you saw what Mary did to Martha. You see, in the conversation there, one was seven, one was not seven. One was soaking in the word of God. The other was busy in the kitchen, came complaining, ah, Lord, what is this thing you are doing? We, there is time for everything, time for the kitchen, time for the word. Why is this lazy girl sitting here and only listening to you? But the Lord said, she has chosen what is greater. Amen. She has chosen what is greater. So what is your choice? Is, is your choice to be filled so your belly will become big? And when we, we are eating and lazying about, sleeping the whole day in the name of full-time ministry, and our bellies are growing big, we think we are blessed. We are sick and need deliverance. Amen. So let us come to the place where what the Lord commanded us, we will do in Jesus' mighty name. Hallelujah. So Amen. wherever you are, let us rededicate ourselves. Let us, let, <laughs> let us recommit ourselves to this mission because that is what the Lord is seeking for us to do. Not for us to preach and excite people so they would give money. Not for us to promise people that when you give money, I know, seed time and harvest, yes, it's a principle. But it does not only end with money. It, end, it goes beyond money. If you speak kind words to people, they speak kind words back to you. If you, 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 you are very rude to people, you increase in rudeness. You harvest rudeness. Because strangely, those who are rude, when people are rude to them, it hurts them. Those who are rude, when somebody becomes rude to them, it hurts them. What I'm trying to say is that the Lord had a reason for coming to earth. To take all the authority and all the power, all the dominion that the devil stole by deceit. When he operated as Satan, to take it all back and to hand it over to us again so that we would be able to bring in many. Do you know that having dominion means that when you speak, people listen to you? There is no other message that we can preach except the message of the kingdom of God. The message of entering into the kingdom. Because until someone enters into the kingdom, they do not understand anything that has to do with the kingdom. Everything is foolishness to them. Yes, everything is foolishness to them. They would even tell you, why do you pray in tongues? But let them be born again. Let them enter into the kingdom. And you will realize that before they know they are doing it, they don't understand it, but they are convinced that it is the right thing to do. Because the Lord has a purpose for us. And the purpose is to bring in the lost. Father, in the name of Jesus, we thank you for this exaltation and we thank you for your word. We thank you, Lord, that you have not left us without your word that would guide us. Your word says that your word is a lamp unto our feet. You guide us by your word. And as we have heard your word, Lord, empower us, sustain us, help us to be able to do that which you have called us to do. In the mighty name of Jesus, in doing your word, Lord, if there be any hindrances, 
If any Satan should rise up against us, Lord, we lift up a standard by your spirit against it. In the mighty name of Jesus, we ask that the spirit of discernment will be alert and sharp in us. According to your word and according to your purpose, we would use your word as a measuring rod and come against anything that will rise to eliminate that which you have called us to do, to stop us from fulfilling purpose and destiny. In the mighty name of Jesus, we give you praise and we give you glory. In Jesus' mighty name we are prayed. Amen. 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 Isn't God good? And whilst we pray and we minister like this and do the right thing, that which God has called us to do, then his blessings overflows over us. Amen. Obedience is better than all the sacrifices that we can give. When you obey, you rather submit to the goodness of God. But your sacrifices are your works. You want to do something for God to know that you are doing something. That is not what God is desiring. He desires our obedience. So we have to be obedient to the Lord. Amen. 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 Hallelujah. We've been dealing with the book of Acts. If you, 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 you connected to us, share the link again. Share the link to your friends on YouTube. Search for Victor Anyate Patterson. You would find me there. Like the page and share the link so that people will be blessed. Go to Facebook and search for Perez Chapel Almira. Like the page and share it in the name of Jesus. I am also on Facebook. You can find me on Facebook. Like the page, share it so that others will be blessed. Amen. And Amen. don't forget, I think what you shouldn't forget is that if you cannot open your mouth to speak to people, to tell them of the good news, sharing a link, someone is already speaking it. So just share it so that the person can be blessed. That, so that they would also enter into the kingdom. So when you share a link for someone to be blessed and enter into the kingdom, you also share in the reward. Amen? You also Amen. share in the reward. So may the Lord bless us and meet us at the point of our need as we share the word of God to many in the name of Jesus. Hallelujah. God Amen. bless you. Let's get into the word. Amen. For today. We are dealing with the book of Acts. The book of Acts. We've not started reading the chapters yet. I think after today, the next time we would get into it, we'll start reading the chapters and diving into it. We've done the background. We've done the writer. We've done the purpose. We've done how it's divided. And today we are trying to get into some good areas of the scriptures that would be a blessing to us. Amen. Amen. The main messages. So the book of Acts carries some main messages. Amen. I'll just run through them quickly and then we'll take them one by one to get into them. Amen. The book of Acts shows which gospel, which message Christians should preach. Amen. It is an example of which message Christians should preach. The book of Acts is actually <laughs> the very foundation of the church. After Jesus said, I would build my church. And the gates of hell shall not prevail against it. This is the place you see the signs of the church being established. Amen. And the acts, the results of, of Christians coming together and doing that which God has called them to do. The second thing is that the book of Acts teaches how local churches came into existence. Some people will say, oh, as for me, I worship God in my heart. Yes, I know. The Holy Spirit is in you. But come together so that we rub on each other. In Greek, they say, So if you are alone, how would you comfort yourself? How would you minister to yourself? That is why even Jesus calls the church his body. <laughs> and then he says that every, like the body has many parts, yet they all belong together and are united same way, I don't see you putting your, your finger in your mouth and biting it off because it will pain you. Amen. Amen. So Jesus Amen. expects us as his body. Though you see me, I am teaching, you preaching, you prophesying. One is jumping, one is screaming. 
the fivefold ministry, God, Jesus in his wisdom gave those gifts to the body of Christ so that the body would be equipped. Though we are diverse, we, we, our purpose is one. Though we are different, we are children of God. Amen. 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 So the, in the book of us, you realize and you would see how the local church came into existence. Amen. And then Amen. also the third uh, <laughs> main message of the book of Acts is that it teaches how these local churches functioned. So if you want to look at a pattern, the right pattern in which local churches should function or a church should function, the book of Acts teaches it. You would find it in the book of Acts. Amen. If the, I always say that if I take one book, and by the grace of God, I'm able to teach it so that we understand it and work with it. I have done my job. If it even takes us six months to work the book of Acts, it is better than running through the whole Bible and not doing anything and not understanding it. Amen. Amen. Because when you even take the functions of the church, a lot of the things that we call church today, do not qualify because <laughs> what we are doing today is not church. Amen. I see things, I hear things on, on <laughs> I heard one, 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 one man of God say that and uh, he, he, the tithes is, is for the pastor. Really? <laughs> Which scripture? Can you give me a scripture that confirms that the tithes is for the pastor? No. Oh. You know, and because they sit down and they get a camera in front of them and they scream and shout, then you, you have some congregation also screaming and clapping. As if he has, he has spoken some revelation. Meanwhile, it is not Bible-based. It is not Bible-based. <laughs> Hallelujah. The fourth part, thank you, Jesus. <laughs> the fourth part, the book of Acts teaches how these local churches were led. So there is this principle, the first mention of a thing in the Bible. If you want to cross-check if something is right, if something is in the right context, if something is in line with the word of God, go and check the first time that thing was mentioned or that thing occurred in the Bible. Every other thing that occurs after that should line up with it. First mention, the law of first mention. So if the church, which was manifested, amen? Amen. In the book of Acts, how they were led, the leadership set up is what I'm talking about. It is not, I, I always say it is not a star pastor. Most of the star pastors, when they are no more, the church dies off. That local church dies off. That is why in the wisdom of God, he did not establish the church for one person to become the star. The only star we have is Jesus Christ. Because he is the only one who laid down his life for us. And he lives forever. Any star pastor will die. And if he is not born again, well, well. And he was deceiving people. He's going to hell straight. He will not even be alive in eternity. He would be suffering in hell. So the only star I know, the only star you should know, is the star called Jesus. And even he humbled himself. The Bible says that this mind should be in you also as it was in Christ. Though he was God. Man, God, he did not see claiming that position to be something to grasp. But he laid, he humbled himself and laid himself down, even to be, to be crucified on a cross. Because the cross was a disgrace. It's a shameful death. You, they, better they cut off your head than they put you on a cross. But Jesus went to the cross. He says, despising the shame. The Bible says, despising the shame. 
And because of what he did, he has been given a name that is above every other name. So, <laughs> Star Pastor, what is your name? <laughs> because Jesus has been given a name that is above every other name. So, if you think you are a star, Pastor, and everything should revolve around you, your leadership method is neck. Everything should pass through you. If you don't know it, it should not happen. Please, I don't say there shouldn't be order in the church. I am not saying that there shouldn't be order. But don't make yourself a star pastor. Even your Bible, Bible that you are coming to preach from, somebody has to carry it to the pulpit. Five steps, ten steps to put it down for you. Why don't you let the person preach for you? Since you don't have any energy to preach, to do anything. May the Lord have mercy on us. Amen. Amen. So in the, he says that it teaches how the church was led. At the time, they had challenges. Then Dickens and Dicknesses were elected. It wasn't one pastor, only Peter, champion. Hey, Jesus died. He left the church for me. I'm in charge here. Yeah. Hello. No, 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 no. That is not what it is. It is submission. It is a teamwork. Amen. We do Amen. it all together. Unfortunately, the body of Christ, because we have been deceived and we do not know the word, we rather, you know, exalt star pastors. Hey, you don't know me. When I speak. When you speak what? Jesus spoke and it came to be. You, when you speak, what will happen? Let us be merciful. Let us humble ourselves. Let us know the truth so that the truth that we know will set us free. Amen. Mm. How the church was led. And then we'll talk. What I wanted, the next one is that the, the book of Acts teaches where these local churches conducted their meetings, the locations. And now I believe that most of the churches now, even the charismatic churches, are now going back to the book of Acts. Because it is not about gathering a lot of people in one big church. It is about home churches. In the book of Acts, that is how the church started, home churches. Because actually they were persecuted. Although today is free. One of the days, <laughs> even Hansenhof, you, you don't want to go to all night. I remember a, a, a pastor friend of ours. Then we were not pastors. We were having a service at Chinstein. He just walked out. He was stabbed. He was stabbed, robbed and stabbed. He almost died. All of us had to leave the service and carry him to the hospital. That time to, hey, going to hospital. You really? You want to show up there? With what? You know, we have gone through all of that. Prayed, prayed, prayed. The church has been accepted. And today, people spring up like mushrooms and they are looking down on those pastors who prayed to establish the church in South Oost. And they call them that they think, they point fingers at them as if they have done nothing. If you have someone to honor, honor the fathers who went ahead of you to prepare the ground and to pray and to, and to go through the challenges. We honor you, men of God, great men of God. When we say great men of God, it is not the ones who are wearing suits and making, showing lights and those things on platforms. No, 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 no. No, you came to meet people, great men in this land. They are not your fathers. Your fathers are somewhere else. And you look down on the ones who built the foundation of the church in this, our Southeast. Pastors like Pastor Srebo, pastors like Pastor Emmanuel Beidou. He's now in Ghana. Great men of God who toiled. They will not even do that which will make them comfortable. The Lord should be merciful to us. He says that <laughs> it teaches us how they, where they conducted their meetings. So you, we are conducting our meetings in BZ2. Fine. Praise God. Do you, do you come to set the thing up? Because if we are having the service in somebody's home, 
Won't you come and help? Won't you come and help so that we set the place up? Amen. Or would you just leave it? Amen. Amen. <laughs> Hallelujah. Somebody is asking a question. Look at what is the question is that, and I don't know if it's a statement or a question, but I would want to read it. He says, the honoring of those before you, is that what Jesus did when he said, no one in the kingdom or in, in the Old Testament is greater than John the Baptist? He was honoring John the Baptist because John the Baptist had gone before him to prepare the way, even Jesus. He knew his time will come when he would become greater. But please, if someone did not say, this is the Lamb of God that takes away the sins of the world, how would you yourself come and say, I am the Lamb of God that takes away the sins of the world? No, someone should bear witness of you. Someone should announce you. Some people like Apostle Simon Babs. Do you know the toil they have toiled in this land? Apostle Emmanuel Kone. The toil they have toiled in this land, gone through all of the challenges that they've gone through. I am encouraging us. If you have an honor to honor, let me tell you, the tithes is for the body, all of us. Don't give it to one pastor to chop. I'll be honest with you. I'm, I'm not against giving. But there is something called first fruits. Your first increase of the year. Oh, go and give it to your prophet. Better still, look for these great men who ask questions, ask people who have been in the church, the church of Amsterdam. I mean, when I say the church of Amsterdam, I'm talking about the body of Christ in Amsterdam. Look for them and honor them. The Lord should be merciful to us. Our very first bishop in this land, Bishop O.A. Bernard, we're call, then we're calling him Bishop Juan. Today, bishops have come into the system. If they did not go ahead, then even for a charismatic to call themselves bishop was a taboo. But they carried that <laughs> stigma. And today, when you call yourself a bishop in the, in the charismatic era or system, nobody stigmatizes you. Amen. It is accepted because, you know, some of the titles, the, the, the meaning of it is so simple. It is just fearfully and wonderfully made. <laughs> Amen. 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 But what I'm trying to make us understand is that in the church, the church that should be an example for us. Amen. Amen. The, the sixth part of it is that he says that the book of us is a guidebook for church missions. When you say church missions, going out like this month, what it is. If I want to talk about this month, I want to say that this month is the month of missions. Sending forth men to go out and preach the gospel and to bring in the harvest. The evangelist. People no longer want to be called evangelists because, you know, it doesn't carry weight. But they are the ones that should go out there. That is the gift God has given to you. And if you put it down and you carry bishop, you carry which one title, you go and account. What God gave you, you don't like. You carry another one and use it. So you useless the one that God gave you. Go and read the parable of the talents. The one God gave you, you don't like. You have carried another one. Amen. Amen. <laughs> The Lord have mercy on us. I don't want to dwell on it. The next point is that the book of us shows how persecution only results in the growth of the church. When you are being fought against as the church, it results in growth. You know, this is where you, the scripture, <laughs> he, all things works together for our good comes in. Because if persecution had not come in, the Lord did not allow persecution to hit the church. They would have gathered in Jerusalem alone and played big time church. And the church, the gospel will not spread. So persecution. When you gather and you are many, they want to kill you. So you will scatter. 
and hide. Because if you don't hide, they will cut your head. And nobody wants to die before it's time. All of us have purpose. Amen. Amen. So let's look at them one by one. And I hope we have enough time. It's, all, it's, it's almost nine now. I hope I will be able to go through it quickly. Amen. Which message we should preach. Remember that persecution. You would think, you know, so that it is said in Greek language again. He says that when you are being knocked on your head, it strengthens your neck. That is what persecution does to the church. So you, when you think they are knocking your head, they are knocking your head. When in, and whenever somebody is coming to knock your head, you strengthen your neck. So before you know, your neck has become strong. In Jesus' name, amen. Amen. So persecution brought about growth. Amen. Today, in, in, in Amsterdam, South East here, we are being persecuted as a church. I saw an article <laughs> reading that there are more churches in South East than cafes and we are reaching so many than the cafes are reaching but we don't have space to have church they will deceive you they have a garage you have bought it then if you don't take time they deceive you you go out of it they give you a temporary building and later they will come and tell you that that temporary building too they are coming to develop it so move out and now they will not give you anything if it was a cafe look at what they have done on, on, at the Bama station. Look at all the, the cafes and restaurants and all of those things. Hotels that are springing up in the Bama. And there are no church buildings. No places to worship. And they don't know when this place was bush bush. We were the ones who were praying at night. Having all night. And we fired up the place. And now the place has become fertile. And they think let us bring other businesses in and drive these ones out because they make noise. Ferenc to Advec, when the place died out and nobody, you dare not even drive through that place. Churches took over buildings there, paid money. I remember our church when we were there, we we're paying over 5,000 euros per month. When we calculated <laughs> for some years, we would have bought the building two times. But where was boldness to buy, say we want to buy the thing? We developed the place and the <laughs> Burgermeister, one lady Burgermeister called us, had meetings with us. Oh, we want to help you. We'll move out. We'll give you a place. Go and look for places. We had meetings upon meetings upon meetings. Eventually, they gave us an embargo. Uh, bestemming plan. The place was not uh, designed for church, so you don't fit in the thing. Now, we want businesses to come because now the place has become known. That was where a lot of the junkies were hiding. When you cross over the French Stewart, the metro station, and you go there, you are afraid to even walk through that place. We, we prayed, and the place became alive, and they kicked us out. May the city council, I pray they do not make such a mistake and kick churches out of Amsterdam Southeast because before they know, the crime rate, the way it will pick up and things that will start happening here. Because we prayed for God's presence to come and dwell here. And if you kick us out, whatever used to rule over here will come back. And the, the Bible is true. He says that when you cast out the demon and he goes, he's going to look for seven more wicked ones. So the situation, the way it was, it will be worse than it is. It will become. Amen. Amen. So I pray that some wisdom will be hammered into leadership. I mean the government. So that they don't kick churches out. They rather should look for a location and build these nice, nice buildings. For us to enjoy our worship of God. There are some that are misbehaving, but some are behaving themselves. I mean, I saw a clip where <laughs> MCTC is during when children come to school without food. It is the church that gives them fruits, banana, this and that, this and that. When they are passing, they will take uh, drinks and all of that. And the same church you are kicking out of the neighborhood. The same church. We, we organize. Uh, 
<laughs> language classes and, and do a lot of trainings for people. Fatherhood, uh, symposiums and all of that. And you want to kick us out. What I'm trying to say is that if we get into these six points, you would see that the church then, that is the example, that is exactly what they were doing. Making sure that the community was healthy. Making sure that we share things in common. When we listen to the, when we read the story of Ananias and Sapphira, we think that, oh, it is just about them. It is not about them. The highlight is on the point that people will sell even their personal properties and bring it to the church. I know a pastor, a pastor friend. His money that he has saved to stabilize himself in this country. When we're raising funds to get a building, he sold it into rate. He took grace and God has blessed him. Amen. Amen. I mean, Amen. that is what the church in the book of Acts experienced. And that is what we should do. Amen. As a church. So I admonish us. I don't want to get into all the points, but I admonish us that as we study the word of God, as we are about to, but from next we get into the word of God, reading the book of Acts, whatever is there is an example for us to learn from. So we will tailor make it. Listen, if the Bible says, thou shalt not steal, and today you don't have anything to steal, but you can do 419 online, He's not literally saying go, in, go and break you. Don't go and break your brother's door and take his property. But don't do anything that you would use to cheat on your brother. So put it in the context of today and apply it. Amen. Amen. Because somebody will say that hey, the Bible is a cake and it's not relevant. Really? Not relevant? Then why do you wear a shirt? If the Bible is not relevant, it is what you came to meet being done that is decent that you do. Amen. Amen. So it is my prayer that as we get into the book of Acts, I've mentioned these things. The, the actual message of the, of, the, of the church, that is the first thing. It teaches how local churches came into existence. How come church... If we are to get into it, every point is a teaching on its own. Amen? Amen. Amen. How do churches function? Amen. Amen. I became a manager not because I, le I went to school to learn. I learned it from church. I learned it from church. I remember when church started, leadership trainings. And how to manage things. And how to set up of leadership. Honoring leader. And the leader ahead of you. What, how you should speak to leaders. How you should behave yourself. How you should be part of a team. And that is how I used to work in the secular world. And it has profited me. Strangely, those are the things that the secular world is also looking for. Not someone who is a star leader. You, you don't take advice from anybody. You solo. Anything you say should be final. No. It's a teamwork. And that is what the secular world is also looking for. So you think the church is irrelevant, but the church is, is empowering us. Amen. If I'm to tell you what the church has done for me, as for me personally, the church as the ecclesia coming together and teaching me. <clears throat> Amen. My Amen. schoolmates, they know me. And they know, Jale, this guy... It wasn't well. But today, when I speak, they, 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 they honor me in small respect because at least, you know, I talk sense. Amen. 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 So we should look at these things. He says that also, the book of Acts, it teaches how local churches were led then. So the same format should be brought here. No star leadership. Team leadership. Amen. Team Amen. leadership. We all belong. We all have a purpose, but we work together to achieve the universal purpose of Christ for the church. Amen. And Amen. how meetings were conducted. 
You don't sit down and say, yeah, the spirit has come and they are here. Why? You you will not close. You what will you do? Pray till Jesus comes. Unless it's a revival, like the one that hit those that school there, that for weeks they were worshiping and worshiping and worshiping. That one is different. Even that it comes to an end. There is nothing that has a beginning that will not have an end, except God Almighty. He doesn't have a beginning, he doesn't have an end. If he had a beginning and had an end, we are in trouble. Amen. How Amen. to conduct yourself, how services should be conducted. You don't say the anointing has come. So this one, today I will prophesy you, your head will take. No, you cannot prophesy for people's head to take. In the contest, anointing without control creates annoyance. Amen. 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 And then missions. What, what, which part of your church actually is interested in the lost? And this month, our church, Perez Chapel, we are focusing and highlighting, reaching out to the lost. And those who we have reached out to, who have gone down like South Marine, we are going down there to bring them up. And when we are going, we are coming with our suit uh, to come down. Because me, I cannot swim. So you are down there. When I'm coming, I have to prepare myself. Amen. So you don't keep me there for me to die. Amen. And then also to look at how persecution increased the church. Whilst we are being fought against now in, in Amsterdam Southeast, get yourself ready. The revival that is about to hit this place. And that is what the devil always foresees. He sees ahead of what is going to happen and he tries to stop it. So if he should get us out of this place, and we, we are gone. But whilst they are pushing us out, go to Lely Start now. Go and check how many churches are there. Gone are the days. You only have two churches there, charismatic churches. But now, a lot of churches are there because believers are moving all over the place. And wherever they go, also churches are starting. Persecution brings about increase. It is my prayer that this evening, whatever you heard, would rather encourage you, would rather motivate you, would challenge you for you to see into the kingdom, more into the kingdom than your individual selfish motive and desire. Because whatever you desire, you would live on this earth. The church marches on. The church is forever. The church is eternal. And the church continues as God himself is eternal. He says that, for God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son, that whosoever believe in him will not perish. Perishing means that an end comes. He says you will not perish. Your, your existence will not come to an end. But then he says that you would have everlasting or eternal life. Which means the life that he would give to you will not come to an end. You are listening to me. You are not a born again believer. You are listening to me. Your sins are making you feel guilty. You are heavy. Your sins even makes you feel sick. When you think about the things you have done, it is only Jesus who can forgive you and you yourself will know that you have been forgiven. The guilt will be rubbed away. The shame will be taken away. He would rather exalt you and put you on the platform for you to be seen. The good in you will be magnified. So I would like to admonish you. Help, I want to help you. So you would enter into the kingdom with all boldness. You would enter into the kingdom knowing that the past is gone and you need not to look back. You only learn from your past. You don't have to stand there and keep looking at the past and pondering over the past and thinking, oh, wow, well, no, let the past be in the past. Look forward, come to Jesus, and he's ready to hold your hand and bring you forward in the name of Jesus. Let me pray this prayer with you, that you would be born again. You are sick in your body. You cannot heal yourself. You are sick in your spirit. Your life is not in line with the, the word of God and it's not in line with the Lord. I would like to pray with you. Repeat this prayer after me. Say, Lord Jesus, thank you for 
your word. Thank you for salvation. Thank you that you, you died for my sins. I acknowledge that I am a sinner. I cannot save myself. Forgive me my sins. Receive me into your kingdom. I take you and make you my Lord and my Savior. Forgive me my sins. Establish me in your kingdom that I would become your child. If you have prayed that prayer, you are born again. You are in the kingdom. And the Lord, it sounds simple, but it is one of the greatest things that have happened to you. Your spirit is renewed. Your thoughts need to be renewed. And your thoughts can only be renewed by you having the unadulterated word of God into your system. And that is where the church comes in. Look for a Bible-believing church and join that church. Tell the pastor that you are born again and you want to be established in the word. Better still, look on the screen. Our information, telephone number, and email is there. Connect with us. Go to our website, Perez Chapel Almira, and follow us, follow us, like our pages, and the Lord will through us be a blessing to you. We humbly desire that the Spirit of God that sets free, the Spirit of God that renews our minds will work in you, help you, and restore you in the mighty name of Jesus. Have a blessed weekend. And if you are sick in any part of your body, I rebuke that sickness and I ask for total restoration into your body. I ask that the Lord who heals, the Lord who provides, your lacks, uh, anywhere you lack anything, the Lord is your giver, the Lord is your provider. May you be blessed abundantly so that you become a blessing to many. May you become a ch channel of blessing to many. And may you continuously connect to the Savior, the Lord, and the restorer of our souls. God bless you. Have a wonderful weekend. Amen. Amen. Amen.